We're back at the Georgia 420 Hour. We are live with uh, Axie Blunden, and Brand Stacks, Angeline Jester, Forever Love, and Brian Jester is her Forever Love. So uh, these, these are, are ham farmers. So ham farmers with their own brand, White Label. Tell us a little bit about your business. Right on. Well, thanks for having us, James and Teresa. It's a pleasure to be yes, here. Yes, we appreciate you being here at the party. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's been fun so far. Good to mm-hmm. chat with all these fine folks. Um, so, our business and um, the model we're working on is, is called the House of Brands Tracks. And we are the trusted provider of the goods and services needed to make and um, sell a product in the cannabis space. So, we um, our vertically integrated organization and with a focus Boom. on product development <laughs> and um, <coughs> establishing market channels to get products to consumers in new and emerging cannabis markets. So we have a real focus on the Southeast. Our uh, main extraction and manufacturing center is in Asheville, North Carolina with farms uh, you know, across the Carolinas, Virginia, Alabama and uh, brands really focused on the Ash, uh, excuse me, Atlanta to DC market. Um, Southeast Atlantic. Yeah, Southeast Atlantic is really our core focus. And um, we have here um, one of our brands in this specific market in Atlanta and our um, strategic partners in the space, Brian and Angie, that are um, with us. And we're all working collaboratively essentially to provide the new and emerging product companies, retailers, distributors, a, um, a platform to create products and get them yeah. to consumers and help the farmers move their product onto shelves, essentially. Well, now that's personally one of my favorite products right there. These? The, Thank the, you. The one over here toward James, yes. the Forever Love. Hand that down there. That's a nice sound, does very yeah. well. Our tension relief salve. Well, you know what? That, I have a little bit of psoriasis and that, and Stephanie's got a, also got a salve that works great on that yeah. little bit of psoriasis I have. You know, and that's a great example of uh, you know working together on a formulation like they came to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Product development. Product development. Find a problem, have a solution. That's right. Yeah, it's a good product. I love it, and I love the. At first, when you put it on, it leaves that green. Little hue, mm-hmm. and you're like, I don't know mm. what that is. War paint. That's salvation. <laughs> That's so, what's been you guys' experience from the legal side when establishing your business? I mean, you said you started like five years ago? Yeah, I started my first business uh, five years ago in Colorado okay. after a, uh, a uh, three years with a startup there called OpenVape that okay. grew significantly during that time. Before that, I was working on the legislative side mm-hmm. as a full time. Uh, Field organizer for um, pub, uh, for Amendment 64 to legalize adult use cannabis, and then uh, also for the Obama re-election campaign. Okay. And um, in 2016, started that first business, and have uh, had a few uh, offshoots and you know successful ventures since then, and then uh, brought it back east in 2018, mm-hmm. linked up with uh, Zebulon Bulls. Our Whoa chemist and amazing um, polymath COO co-founder and um, he connected us together and you know so far it's all been word of mouth referral yeah yep and um, we're just starting to like ramp up marketing to to reach folks and really want to just establish ourselves as a uh, the you know top tier provider in the southeast for new independent businesses so that they have a way to enter the market and find a way in the industry that, you know, is quickly being also um, filled up by big established yeah. uh, it's a, businesses. It's a, yeah. it's a solution for success for a small farmer who wants to create a solution to a problem in which he finds in his local ecosystem or environment, however you would like to describe it, to make a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're well, all. You guys are making a difference. You're you're in this de- product development phase, mm-hmm. and you've already got a, a good line. Would you like to tell us a little bit about some of your products? Sure. Do you want to start with your yeah. southern and products? Some of the south. 
right here is our topical, and it's 2,000 milligrams of what? It's CBD. Good medicine, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. From a local farm here in Georgia, us. And so it's kind of like in your backyard. And yeah, so yeah. it makes it really potent, but there's arnica in it and some mango butter, some of my favorite things in there, mm -hmm. but it's very yeah, potent. Good. Helping, it's, helping a lot of people. It's not a normal off your line product in the sense of ingredient list. Mm -hmm. What it is is a custom derivation from the knowledge of people Using Ange brand tracks that ap that apply plant medicine to specific problems and ailments. This is a solution to a problem, which is what I'm trying to emphasize on how to enter the market. Find the solution, address it, or find the problem, address it with a solution. Mm -hmm. So, how did you get into farming? As a second generation indoor cultivation person, hemp was the check to fill the dreams off the bucket list. So you are already into soil development yeah. and uh, you, you do consultation work in that field, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have worked with a company, OASCO, O-A-S-C-O, uh, Organic Ag Supply Company. We provide all the organic inputs you would need as a small farmer, small hobbyist to create a product in which you yourself would personally want to consume, yeah. which is the, the target idea here is, is self-empowerment, the ability yes. for one to produce what they need as a small plant, just like a tomato or anything else. And Angeline, yes. how, how do you feel about being a hemp farmer and the, the development of some great <clears throat> products? Well, I love it. Yeah, because you're a great. nature girl. Yes, so, yeah. I, I love Mother Earth. I love plant medicine and all different kind of herbal medicine. I'll say, it, I'll put it out there. It's medicine and it helps a lot of people. And yeah, so it it's does. very exciting to be able to help people, especially when they didn't know that it was there before. Yeah, yeah, that's that's always good when you can introduce this plant to new people. And introduce people to plant medicine in general. Exactly. You know, it's kind of a vehicle for a greater awareness about plant-derived, plant medicine, plant-derived products, you know, sustainable business. Cannabis um, is the introduction to the addiction of gardening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I sure it's can't wait for the day to be able to grow up in my backyard garden. Coming soon. I mean, Virginia's legalizing July 1. That's the yeah. first state in the southeast mm -hmm. to do so, which is, you know, to be expected. There, Virginia's typically kind of a bellwether for federal legislation yeah. and, right and there, you know, has become DC. more progressive over the years. So we're just going to see that continue to go north to south and west to east, you know, except for Florida. They really sprung on it early. Florida's yeah. two states. It yeah. doesn't matter exactly. anyway. Exactly, yeah. So we're really poised to, you know, in that last frontier zone of uh, cannabis decriminalization, legalization, and industry implementation. We're gonna, we're there to uh, to provide those, you know, those trusted goods and services. I mean, I've been in the in the regulated cannabis space for a decade. Um, originally from New York City, Zeb's originally from Humboldt County, and um, you know, between folks like Jester and Angie and our Virginia partners and others, we have decades of experience in the regulated cannabis world and you know that business side of things and um, we want to equip the the <clears throat> small independent businesses the social enterprises you know in an egalitarian way that you know provides also racial justice especially in places like the southeast yeah um, we, we did not just walk into this with the opportunity of money signs we were doing this before it was a legal industry <laughs> yeah. right it wasn't legal industry it was just a business yeah and there's no i mean there's no like get rich quick scheme here you know that's like that's what was happening maybe in the black market in little fringe areas of of the space and sure people get lucky work hard good timing whatever but it's not uh you know it's not something that is a, a money pit jackpot overnight. You know, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of uh, hard work, foresight, you know, relationships, and I think above all else, passion. And, oh you yeah, know, I believe you have to have passion. Truth and integrity, yeah. So, per acre, what do you think an investment for a farmer is? A new farmer. I, well, let's let's 
clarify that. By new farmer, do you mean someone who has a cow pasture that never <laughs> farmed anything? Or do you mean a new farmer who knows what row cropping is? Well, I'm talking about a new farmer in this new legal, sp legal space of growing hemp in Georgia. Most of those were not row croppers. Most of those had no idea about what farming and agricultural production really is. Mm -hmm. They had an idea and a, a high spirit about planting something, hoping for high returns. Yeah. But if we focus on the guy that knows farming, that knows how to plant things, knows how to water them, how to maintain them, how to, to some extent, potentially <laughs> harvest them, mm -hmm. 